Hello everyone and welcome to this week's OpenGL water tutorial and this week we're going to be adding specular highlights to our water. Firstly I just wanted to apologise for missing the tutorial a couple of weeks ago. If you've been following my devlogs then you'll know that I'm in the process of moving flats so things have been even busier than they usually are. Unfortunately the same is probably going to happen to the next tutorial as well I'm afraid because I'm actually going to be moving to Germany next Saturday and then the Saturday after I'm going to be moving to my new flat so I'm probably not going to have time for a tutorial with all of that and the Kickstarter preparations going on. But the week after that I should be able to get back to my usual schedule again so it will hopefully just be one tutorial week that I have to miss. So I'm really sorry about that but this week I have been able to do a tutorial and it's all about lighting and normal maps. Before you start this episode you'll need to download this normal map from the link in the description unless you want to use your own and I've also provided a new seamless DUDV map which you can use instead of the old one to remove any seams from the water. Ideally the normal map and the DUDV map should actually correspond to each other but I wasn't able to find any matching ones online yet but I will try to find some for next time. It doesn't actually make too much of a difference though, so don't worry about that too much. So as you hopefully remember from the lighting tutorials that I did ages ago, the lighting on an object is based on its surface normals. Unfortunately, our water is a completely flat quad, so the normals would all be pointing straight upwards and the lighting would be very boring indeed. If our water model was more realistic, it would have normals that look something like this, so what we're going to do this week is just pretend that our water model is realistic and we're going to use the normals like this even though our water is actually completely flat. By using these normals that are all over the place like this it will make the lighting act as if the water weren't completely flat and as if it was actually bumpy and realistic. But we still need to generate these normals from somewhere and that's where the normal map comes in. In the same way that we used a DUDV map to indicate the distortion on different parts of the water we can use a normal map to indicate the normal at different points on the water's surface. The pixel colour at any point on the normal map here can indicate the 3D normal vector of the water at that point. The normal map is mostly a blue colour here because the blue value represents the up axis and in our case that's the y axis. So we'll use the blue component of the normal map colour to be the y component in the normal vector. The red and green components of the normal map can then be used as the x and z components of the vector, but this causes one problem. Because you can never have a negative colour, the components of the normal vector are also always going to be positive. That's not a problem for the y component because we would always want our surface normal to be pointing upwards to some extent, but we don't necessarily want the normal to always be pointing in the positive x and z directions. To be realistic the normal should also be able to point in the negative x and z directions as well, so we're just going to use a quick conversion that we've used so many times before in these tutorials to convert the x and z components to be between minus 1 and 1 instead of just 0 and 1. And that is how we're going to be extracting the normal vectors from the normal map. So let's jump into the water fragment shader code and the first thing that we're going to do this week is to change these three lines here, the lines that we use to calculate the distortion because I actually found out a better way of doing it this week. So just delete those three lines and add in these three lines instead and if you want you can download these three lines from the description of this video. It's exactly the same concept but it's just done in a slightly different way which means that we'll only need to sample the normal map once instead of twice. If you remember from last time we were sampling the DUDV map at two different places and then mixing the results together to get the final distortion value and we would have had to do the same with the normal map to get a similar effect with the lighting. But this new method samples the DUDV map once to get a distortion value and it then uses that distortion value as distorted texture coordinates which can then be used to sample the DUDV map again to get an actual distortion value but can then also be used to sample the normal map once to get the normal. It also produces a slightly different look to the ripples which I actually think look a little bit nicer and I'm probably going to switch to this method for the water in soccer one as well. Back in the water fragment shader we're going to create a new sampler 2D for the normal map because obviously we're going to want to sample the normal map at some point and then in the water shader class we have to do the usual stuff so we have to create a new int which will hold the location uh, of that normal map uniform variable 
Then we're going to get the location of that uniform variable by calling the get uniform location method and putting in normal map. And then we're going to indicate which texture unit the normal map should be sampled from and we're going to indicate that it should be sampled from texture unit 3 because that's just the next available texture unit. Then in the water renderer class we're going to create a string constant which will indicate the texture file name for the normal map and I called my normal map texture, I called it normal map, um, so just put whatever you called yours. Then we're going to need an int to hold the ID of the normal map texture once it's been loaded and then in the constructor we're going to actually load up the normal map by calling loader.loadTexture and putting in the file name of the normal map. Then down in the prepare render class, uh, in the prepare render method, we're going to bind the texture to texture unit 3, so don't forget to put texture unit 3 there, and we're going to bind the normal map to texture unit 3. So we can now sample the normal map from the fragment shader, and let's do that now. So down here, almost at the bottom, we're simply going to sample the normal map and get the normal map color. Um, we're going to use the texture function, we're going to sample the normal map, and we're going to sample it at these distorted texture coordinates, the same coordinates that we used to sample the DUDV map. And for now, we're just going to set the output color of this fragment to that normal map color, just to give us an idea of what the normal map looks like, all distorted over the water's surface, and there you go. So that's pretty much a representation of the normals of our water surface. So let's now go back and delete that last line because obviously we don't actually want our water to look like that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to extract the normal from that normal map color in the way that I explained earlier in this video. So for the X components, we're just going to use the red value of the color and we're going to convert that so it's between minus one and one. For the Y component, we're just going to use the blue value and for the Z components, we're going to use the green value, um, which is also going to be converted between minus one and one. And then we're just going to normalize that normal to make sure that it's a unit vector. So we've now got the surface normal of the water, but to calculate the lighting, we need a couple of other things, um, namely some information about the light. So we need a new uniform VEC3, which is going to indicate what the light color is. And in the water vertex shader, we need a uniform VEC3, which is going to be the light position so that we can give the shaders a bit more information about where the sun is uh, in the scene. So now in the water shader class, obviously we have to do the usual thing two more times. So we need a location, an int for the location of the light color and the light position uniform variables. Then we're going to get the location of both of these making sure to spell the uniform names correctly, especially for the light color one there. Make sure you've used um, either the UK or the American spelling, whichever one you used in the shader code. Um, and do the same for the light position. And then we're going to create a method which can actually load up this information to the shader. So it's gonna take in a light, which is going to basically be the sun in the scene. And then we're going to load up the position and the color of the sun. So to location light color, we're going to load up the sun dot get color. And then for the position, we're going to load up the sun's position to location light position. So that will load up the information of the sun to the shaders. Then in the water renderer class, uh, we now need to take in a light so that we can send it to the shader somewhere down here anywhere after you've started the shader you can load up the light and then of course in the render method that's also going to need to take in the sun which can then be put into the prepare render method and then in the main game loop you're also going to need to put in your sun or whichever light you want to use into the water renderer dot render method so going back to the water vertex we need to calculate uh, a vector pointing from the light to the water. And this is very similar to the sort of stuff we did in the lighting tutorials a long time ago. So if you've forgotten any of that, you can go back to that. Um, but to calculate this, we're just going to do the world position of the vertex minus the light position. And that will give us a vector pointing from the light to the water. Uh, and then in the fragment shader, in the water fragment shader, we now need to have an in vec3 which is going to be that from light vector and there are a couple of other things that we need to calculate the lighting uh, we need 
a shine damper value and a reflectivity value exactly the same as we had back in those lighting tutorials a long time ago uh, so if you've forgotten this stuff you can go back to that tutorial and refresh yourself a bit and then I've actually just copied a load of code or well, four lines of code from those tutorials about the specular lighting a long time ago which are these lines here so hopefully you should know what these lines mean um, and you should remember doing them but if you don't just go back and have a look at episode 12 I think I think it was of my uh, OpenGL tutorials and it will explain all of that stuff just a very quick reminder of what's going on here we've got the from light vector which is the vector pointing from the light to the water we've got the view vector which is the vector pointing from the water to the camera and all we're doing is reflecting the light off the water using the normal vector and then we take the dot product of these two vectors to see how similar they are and the closer they are together the more light is going directly into the camera and therefore the brighter the specular highlights appear so we have now calculated the specular highlights and we can simply add that on to the color of the water um, and we have to convert it to a VEC4 first uh, and we can just set the alpha component to be zero because we don't want to add any extra alpha there and then if you run that the water should now have some very nice specular highlights which depend on the direction of the light so hopefully uh, you understood all of that I went a little bit quicker because we have basically done all of that before but if any of that was confusing to you then do go back and have a look at episode 12 of my OpenGL tutorial series as that will explain all of the maths uh, in a lot more detail for this week though that is it next time we'll be creating some soft edges for the water and that will probably actually be the last of these water tutorials and then if all goes well with the Kickstarter we can get back to covering topics like text rendering, particle effects and shadows. Don't forget to check out yesterday's devlog video for a brief explanation of shadow mapping. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a fantastic week and I will see you all next time.